Breaker TV. Hey gamers, what's up? It's Ed Park, aka Togrim, bringing you my level 50 PvP spec guide for the Trooper Vanguard, Bounty Hunter, Power Tech, Mirrored Advanced Classes. Before we look at the specs, let's quickly review the two role combat system as described by Georg Zoller, a dev on the Bioware team. The first role is accuracy versus defense, i.e., did the attack land, and the second role is for a shield versus crit. It's important to note that a crit can't be shielded, and a sufficiently high crit rate for an ability will push shield off the table. Now for the first roll for defense chance you can dodge melee and ranged attacks but you cannot um, defend against force and tech attacks. Force and tech attacks you can think of as spells from other games which aren't avoidable and by the same token shield chance only works on ranged and melee attacks it doesn't work on force or tech attacks as I said before you can only shield an attack that wasn't a crit. So if you're curious as far as how to know which of the four attack types you're looking at, just bring up your skills tab and you can see. The interesting thing is that all classes in this game have either force or tech abilities, and those tend to be the most important abilities from a damage and a crowd control uh, perspective. So you can't defend against force and tech, you can't shield force and tech, and you can't shield crits. There's a very detailed article that I wrote up in the, there's a link to it in the description for this video on YouTube where I discuss all of this. And defense chance and shield chance shouldn't be confused with damage type, i.e. elemental energy, internal, and kinetic. Those are not considered as part of the defense chance and the shield chance calculations. Okay, with that in mind, let's take a look at our first spec. Here's the 2613-2 spec. And instead of going line by line and talking about every talent that I chose, let me start first by looking at the talents that I skipped. I skipped the 16% armor increasing talent because remember, armor only applies against kinetic attacks and energy attacks. It has no effect on mitigating elemental or internal attacks. I skipped the shield absorption talent. Remember, shield absor absorption is only relevant if you shield an attack, which meant that you didn't defend it and it wasn't a crit and it was shieldable because it was only a melee ranged attack, not a force protect attack. This is probably the worst talent that we have from a PvP perspective in the tree. I also skipped this 2% uh, flat damage mitigation talent. I actually consider this the best of the three that I skipped because it applies to all damage. There is one talent which is interesting that I put two points into. It's this talent here to increase your shield chance by 2%. That's actually not the reason to get the talent. The reason to get it is to give you a 50% chance when you shield of generating one energy cell or venting 8 heat. It does have an internal cooldown of 6 seconds but it's really helpful for managing your resource to keep you in prolonged combat. I actually skipped the 31 point talent here. It's a nice ability that generates one ammo spell or um, vents heat, uh, but the main thing to note about the 31 point talents in all three of these trees is that they have a 15 second cooldown, so this limits their use, plus to get there you might have to put some points into this um, shield chance buffing talent, which again shield chance is so limiting in this game from a PvP perspective. Great in PvE, not so good in PvP. For the middle tree, we took some of these um, talents that are no-brainers, the 60% armor penetration for your high impact boulder rail shot, the 6% increase for elemental attacks since Vanguard power attacks do so much elemental damage. Increase on your spammable 10 meter, uh, meter range elemental attack as well as your melee base dot. Increasing the damage from your tanking stance. And the assumption is that you are running with a tanking stance so that you can get uh, both guard your friendlies as well as get this nice damage over time component added to your tank stance as well as a snare effect. You get this melee dot here, it's called gut or retractable blade. The last two points you can either put into this interrupt to reduce the cooldown from 8 seconds down to um, 6 seconds, which is important because remember when you interrupt someone with this ability it locks them out of that spell for 4 seconds. Or you can put these two points if you desire either in the flat 2% damage mitigation or to reduce the cooldown of your 30 meter range stun from 60 seconds to 50 seconds. The last two points are a no-brainer. You put them in the first tier of the Asphalt Specialist tree to increase your Stock Strike or Rocket Punch by 8%. The next spec we're going to look at is a 21-2-18 spec. For some reason, it's called Carolina Parakeet on the forums. And the assumption with this particular spec is that you are running with the tanking stance, i.e. Ion Cell or Ion Gas Cylinder. And therefore, we do keep the talents over here for buffing those abilities. Compared to the previous spec, which had 26 points in this tree, we've yanked out the points that give you the speed increase when you charge and the surge bonus damage for your stock strike rocket punch and your point blank AOE and we took one point out of this talent over here since you really only need one point for it to have a potential effect. So that gets you down to 21 points. Now the main thing to put points into the assault specialist tree, you're going to put in 18 points to get this awesome talent here which provides your spammable 10 meter range attack and your melee attack 
a chance to reset the cooldown of your high impact bolt or rail shot. This is a fantastic talent and it's the main reason why a lot of people spec 18 points into the Assault Specialist or Pyrotech tree. Now the key thing is to understand what talent points to get going up here. Since, since we're in the tanking stance, it doesn't make sense to take this talent that gives you a guaranteed proc for your plasma cell or combustible gas cylinder for the dot effect uh, because we're not going to be in that stance. So that means you have to take the two right hand talents, the stock strike, rocket punch talent, damage increase is a great talent, and then you know we just take the 3% endurance because this talent over here is useless for us. Now as far as the second tier goes, we skip the talent that provides a snare effect to our plasma cell or combustible gas cylinder and we already have that anyway through this talent over here. Um, and then so we choose the other two talents to put up 10 points in this tree. This talent over here doesn't have any use in this spec, unfortunately. It's three basic points that you waste to get up to this next tier. This ability right here is really nice. It gives a 30% armor ignore or armor penetration to your high impact bolt or rail shot. And also if your target's on fire, it causes your high impact bolt or rail shot to be reduced in terms of the cost in terms of 50% when it's used, as long as your target's on fire. The other talents you need, you know, obviously 15 points to unlock this 18 point ability. So we take the incendiary around our missile. This is an awesome talent. It allows you to dot up a target from 30 meters away. It's instant cast and it deals heavy elemental damage over time. The other talent to take here is a night vision scope. I actually recommend this over Degauss. Originally I was using Degauss, but uh, what Degauss does, it provides you with the ability to remove movement impairing effects when you activate your bubble. But you really want to activate your bubble when you're taking damage, not necessarily because you're snared. You know, this talent over here increases your stealth detection, reduces the cooldown of your stealth scan, and also beefs up your melee range defenses. This is a much better ability. So this gets you to 18. And you know, this build really revolves around your ability to use your high impact bolt or rail shot as much as possible, which is why the last two points we went ahead and put them into this armor penetration for your high impact bolt or rail shot. So that's Carolina Parakeet. This spec is a hybrid tactics assault specialist or advanced prototype pyrotech. And what it does is it combines the mechanics for the proc reset for the cooldown on your high impact bolt or rail shot with the ability to make uh, that high impact bolt or rail shot crit. So you need a minimum of 21 points in the middle tree and you need 18 points in the right hand tree. The assumption with the spec is that you are going to be using your plasma cell or combustible gas cylinder and therefore we take these three talents here that uh, increase the proc rate of your dot effect as well as increasing its uh, damage and providing a snare effect. So per the other you know previous spec where we had 18 points you want to go ahead and take the night vision scope. This is a good talent and then finish off your last three here for the cooldown resetter. Now as far as this tree is concerned, uh, we're going to skip the talents that are related to your high energy cell or your energy gas cylinders since you're not using that stance and we're also going to skip the 2% damage mitigation talent. That will get you uh, enough points, that'll get you the points you need, that's 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, the 15 to open up the next tier which you fill out and then um, in this last tier you want to take combat tactics. Now in this case because you have the proc reset ability for your cooldown on the high impact bolt or rail shot, you're going to get a lot of mileage out of this talent here as far as you know making your rail shot or high impact bolt you know crit because you're most likely going to be firing it multiple times within a 15 second period. Now, as far as where to go, put the last points in, some people don't put points in hold the line. I think it's really important to do so. This provides you with much needed mobility for this spec because we don't have a charge. So I, I recommend putting it into hold the line. And the last point, it's got to go somewhere. And I think it makes most sense to go ahead and put that into this talent down here, which will increase the damage of your high impact bolt or rail shot. Here is a 4631 tree that is very heavy on the Assault Specialist or Pyro tech tree. It's a heavy burst and sustain DPS spec. And let's take a look at the talents that were skipped, the 3% endurance boost. And then to get up to 15 points, you need to either take the talent that provides you with uh, energy cell or heat venting um, when you're CC'd or with the improved stealth detection, stealth scan, reduced cooldown defenses or the uh, chance to remove your movement um, impairing effects when you pop your bubble. So the question is which of these three things are the best? Um, originally I was hoping that the 100% chance to recharge um, energy cells or vent heat would be useful but the thing to remember is for the CC classifications here, for the four CC types uh, i.e. being stunned, knocked down, or incapacitated, you aren't doing anything which means you're A, not consuming ammo or generating heat, and B, that you're already passively regenerating ammo 
and venting heat. So uh, I was hoping this talent would be really good in practice. I don't think it's that effective. And then your choice boils down to basically, do you want to have a 100% chance to remove roots and snares when you use your bubble, or do you want to have improved stealth detection capability? Uh, what I found after having tried both is that really with your bubble, you want to use this when you're taking a lot of damage, not because you necessarily want to break a movement impairing effect. So the other thing to keep in mind too is that you know bubble has a default um, you know, kind of a longish cooldown of a couple minutes. Granted, it is reduced by talents upwards in the tree, uh, but I found after having used both at 50 that the improved stealth detection is the better talent. So that'll get you up to 15 points, and then you basically take everything for the rest of the way, with the exception of this talent here that provides um, a cooldown reduction for your self-heal as well as your uh, mana-free ability. And that will get you up to 31. Now, looking at the last 10 points to invest, uh, I've made some interesting choices. The no-brainer, of course, is the 60% armor penetration for your high-impact bolt or rail shot. That's a no-brainer because this spec revolves around, you know, getting lots of high-impact bolts or rail shots off through this uh, cooldown resetter. I did go ahead and invest another three points in the tree. One is to improve your critical hit chance for elemental attacks by 6%. And remember, with your pyrotech or assault specialist tree, you're going to be dealing a ton of elemental damage. You're going to get it from your... Um, stance effect, the proc dot. You're going to get it from your incendiary round or incendiary missile. And of course, you're going to get it from your spammable 10 meter ranged attack as well as your conal AoE. And then by taking this talent up here, you gain an additional 3% tech crit chance. And as, as it turns out, all of your elemental attacks are tech crit. So you can think about this as being a flat 3% uh, boost your tech crit chance. Uh, for all abilities, and if it happens to be an elemental ability, it's in a sense a total 9% increase in critical hit chance. And that's really important because, you know, steady damage is easily healed through, but burst damage kills in PvP. The last five points, sorry, four points in the tanking tree, two of them are no-brainer. You want to go ahead and increase the damage of your high-impact bolt or rail shot since the spec really revolves around um, that ability. And then dump the last two points into your elemental uh, damage attacks because, again, this spec generates a ton of elemental damage. Let me know what you think of this video, and if you're looking for more Swelter content, check out my blog, Togrim.com, and my live stream channel at Twitch.tv, where I'm streaming PvP with live commentary. Take care.